House of Peace. In our gospel reading, Mark chapter 6, we see that wherever Jesus went and wherever people heard that he was, whether he was in the desert or whether he was in villages or cities or farms, people came to him, people were drawn to him, and they brought to him the sick on mats. And they begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak or the hem of his garment. And all who touched it were healed. All who touched it were saved. All who touched it found peace. And in our epistle reading for this week, Ephesians 2, 11 through 22, we see also this movement of people drawn from near and from far to Jesus. And so the text says, but now you who were once far off have become near or have been brought near through the blood of Christ, for he is our peace who has made the two into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility that separated groups from each other. He has abolished the law with its commandments and teachings, those particular teachings that would prevent people from having fellowship with one another and to glorify God together. He has abolished the law with its commandments in dogmas that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile both groups into one body, reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, which was God's means in Jesus of killing hostility itself. And so the text says Jesus came proclaiming the good news, or Jesus came proclaiming the gospel of peace. To those who were far off, to you who were far off, and to those who were near. And through him, both of us, and through him, all of us, have access to the Father in one spirit. And it's this spirit that is living within us that makes us, the text says, into a house of peace a dwelling place for God, where God is pleased to remain and to live with us eternally. And this house of peace, this dwelling place of peace, which is the people of God, is a fulfillment of the promise that was spoken to King David of Israel long ago, 1,000 years or so before the time of the Messiah, who is Jesus. And in that text, 2 Samuel chapter 7, David desires to build a house for the ark of God. David desires to build a house of cedar wood for the presence of God. But the word of the Lord comes to the prophet Nathan, and it's, God says to Nathan, go and say to my servant David, are you the one to build me a house? And this story is also told in the book of First Chronicles chapter 22. And in that telling of the story, David reports to his son Solomon, whose name means peace and will be David's successor as king. David reports to Solomon what God had spoke to David, and David says that God had said to him, you're not the one to build me a house 
because you have waged too many wars and you have shed too much blood. So you're not the one to build me the house, but there will be one who is coming after you from your own body who will build that house for me. And we believe that that person came in the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, who walked the way of God's peace to the very end, who refused to live by the hostility that was heaped upon him, but offered his enemies the love and the peace of Christ even as they were killing him on a Roman cross. He refused the way of vengeance against his enemies. He refused retaliation, and he was faithful to God's invitational love unto the end. And therefore, God also highly exalted him, raised him from the dead, made the spirit of peace triumphant over the spirit of violence and death. And all of those who drink of that Holy Spirit of peace become together a house of peace. And we become, as Psalm 89 says, a people that shine like the sun by day, or the moon by night, an enduring witness in the skies, we become that house of peace, so long as we remain in the person of peace, Jesus Christ, the one from whom God will never remove God's steadfast love nor take his spirit from. May God give you the spirit today to grow into that enduring witness. May God make us to be God's house of peace. Amen. Amen.